Hello friends! In the previous video, we assembled the main PCB of the Kinbok 1 computer. In this video, we'll assemble the remaining pieces of the case and install the PCB into the case. This case was built by PCBWay. I'll include a link to the instructions on how you can get one built for yourself. If you want detailed instructions, refer to the previous videos. By the way, I recently added a little forum to www.kalinkcha.com where you can share your build progress. Be sure to check it out when you get a chance. We'll start off by installing the metal standouts for the PCB. There are three of them. Place the PCB over top of the bottom panel of the case as close to the center as possible. Use a marker or a hole punch to mark the locations of the PCB screw holes on the bottom panel. I'm using a nail for this purpose. Drill the holes out and install the spacers or standoffs. I used M3 by 12mm metal spacers in my case. Install rubber feet underneath the bottom panel. I believe I used M4 screws for the rubber feet that I found on Amazon. The next thing we will have to do is drill out the holes for the front and uh, rear panels. The lips of the top and bottom panels already have holes, but we'll have to make them slightly larger to fit the M4 U-clips or U-nuts. Once drilled, install the U-clips into their respective positions. Keep in mind that both the top and bottom panels need these clips. We'll also expand the holes on the front and rear panels to support M4 screws. Before we insert the PCB into the case, let's solder the power wires that will connect to the power supply. I'm using 14 gauge red and black wires for the positive 5 volt line and a 20 gauge wire for the negative 12 volt line. The length is approximately 12 to 16 inches. Once soldered, trim the axis underneath the PCB and insert the PCB into the case, over top of the standoffs. Let's go ahead and attach the front and rear panels to the bottom panel using three M4 screws per panel. We assembled these panels in the previous video. Next, we'll wire up the high voltage lines to the power supply. Take care when working around high voltage lines. I'm using a standard computer power cable in my case. You can just strip the outer protective cover approximately 12 inches to reveal the three wires inside it. Strip the ends of each wire. Crimp a spade to the ground wire, which will then connect directly to the power supply. The hot wire, which is the black one, can be trimmed slightly and soldered to the fuse holder, which is located above the power cable gland. Attach another black wire to the other lead of the fuse holder and solder it to the power switch located on the front panel. The other lead of the power switch will attach to the power supply. For safety reasons, you can insert shrink tubes around the high voltage lines where necessary. I forgot to consider that when working on my computer. Use crimp pins on the remaining black and white wires to insert them into the provided connector included with the kit. Pay careful attention as to where each wire goes within the connector. The middle position is left open. Use zip ties to keep the wires organized and then insert the provided fuse, uh, which is 750 milliamps, into the fuse holder. Without connecting the other end of the power supply to the computer, power it up and check the voltages coming out of the power supply. 
the voltage I should show positive 5 volts on the two leads closer to the front and negative 12 volts on the second lead from the rear if the power supply is oriented in the same way as in the video. If everything checks out, move on to the low voltage connector installation. Strip each wire and attach a crimp pin to each one. Insert each wire into the connector provided with the kit, as shown in the video. The black or ground will be inserted in the first position, the red or positive 5 volts will be inserted next to it, and the brown or negative 12 volts will be inserted in the second to last position. Plug the connector into the power supply. It's a good idea to power around the computer and test its functionality before closing up the case. But since I've already tested and verified it, I'm going to go ahead and install the top panel. Insert U-nuts into the top panel, as was done with the bottom panel. Place the top panel over the bottom panel. You may need to spread the front and rear panel slightly for it to fit. Then, secure with M4 screws, as was done with the bottom panel. Next, slide the side pieces in place and align the screw holes. Use 20mm M3 screws with washers and nuts to secure the side pieces in place. Finally, tighten all the screws. One last thing. Add labels to the lights and switches on the front panel. I used vinyl lettering for this purpose, but this can be done in a variety of ways. Okay, let's run a program to test the computer's functionality. I'm going to enter the Knight Rider program into the computer. I borrowed this particular one from Geoff Harrison on Stockley.com. First, press stop to stop the computer. Press clear and then select binary 3 on the input switches. And then press set to set the address to 3. Press clear and select binary 4 on the input switches. Then press store to store the binary 4 in address 3. Press clear and enter the next instruction which is octal 023. And press store again. Do the same for octal 001 and so on until you've entered the entire program into the computer memory. Alright, let's press start to run the program. Awesome! It appears the program is working as expected. One of my LEDs seems to be glowing slightly all the time, but we'll debug that later. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, please do ask in the comments or email me directly. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and good luck with your build.